Students from around Monmouth County were recently asked about their views on mental health, their well-being, and how this affects their lives in school. Their answers reveal that they are often carrying heavier burdens than they let on. Something that I feel that the teens today are particularly faced with is pressure. We have to think a lot more about the future and make decisions now that will impact us for the rest of our lives. These kids are worried nonstop about how if they fail this one test, their entire career will be ruined because they won't get to their dream college. And that's just a lot of pressure that I think that, I guess, older generations wouldn't have to deal with. Being a teenager today is really hard, of course, with social media and all that and all the cliche stuff about social media that everyone says. It is said a lot, but it is true. And it's really hard to like see your friends maybe out with different friends than you. Yeah, definitely. I'm not on any social media, but I've heard stories about like people getting into arguments over reading something wrong on a social media website. I feel like there's a lot more pressure put on teens today than there was in previous generations. Um, just because it, there's always that pressure to be like with the social media thing there's always the pressure of knowing that people can contact you outside of school which definitely adds to the social stress something like a comment misread or a text to misinterpreted i feel like it wouldn't be as big of a deal in real life because it, there's definitely that aspect of hearing the tone, which when you're reading, you can't, you take the tone as you read it and there's no way to emphasize your tone when you're typing something. Sometimes the homework load is different. Uh, it depends on the days. So you can get more stressed than other days. People can just be plain cruel. And that has happened to me before, and it's not nice. Because everything is seen as a joke, even when it can be uh, secretly harmful. Even if the person doesn't see it that way, it's, it still is to other people. And then they just think you're being weird, and then they try to turn everything against you. You know, there's just keeping up with everything. I feel like, especially, you know, living here, there's a lot of pressures. There's, you know, school with academics and grades and homework, and then there's a bunch of extracurricular activities, which it seems like everyone here is involved in some sort of extracurricular. And there's getting enough sleep, and then there's having friends, and having a life outside of, you know, everything. So, it's a lot to balance. Well, I would say, like, juggling between um, school activities, social life, physical, um, health and that stuff would be difficult for a teenager. I have people who care about me and want to make sure I'm doing all right. I feel really comfortable with sharing my feelings with stuff at school because they really help you with the problems and not just help you with half of them. I do. I am working with staff members to try to try to help me help myself to set myself on the right path. I think teenagers today are very judgmental and they are like trying to figure out their place and take in what the world is giving so it's really hard to know that people are gonna judge you like and you bet they're gonna judge you with everything that you do and all the actions you take and all the words you say. I do feel supported in my school because of all the staff, all the people that I'm surrounded by. The staff are like really caring and supportive for us, like they'll always be there and then I have many friends that are also supportive of me too throughout the day. When I'm talking to staff members at school about my feelings and different problems, I'm not too comfortable with most of them because I know that I'll be seeing them every day for a while and it can be kind of hard to open up to them and like knowing that they can judge you for anything you say. But there are some teachers who know that it's a safe place, like you know that you're in a safe place when you're talking to them. It depends on the staff member, but like I'm not extremely comfortable with sharing my feelings at school with the staff members or really peers. Like there are a few people I trust, but not not a ton. Um, sharing my feelings is never something I was really good at, but there are like there are a few people I can I feel fine sharing feelings with. Yeah.
really depends on which teacher I'm talking to. Some of them I feel like I can be so open with them and really tell them the truth. And others, I'm, a I'm pretty hesitant to saying things to them and being kind of honest with them. On a scale from 1 to 10, I'm kind of like a 2 when it comes to talking to my feelings with staff members. I just don't feel like I'm being listened to, like I'm just going to be pushed aside like all the other kids. One day in class, I had previous um, arguments with this one girl and I told my teacher three times not to put me with this girl and he still put me with her and he, he expected me to work well with her even when I didn't want anything to do with her because she really damaged my mental health and she made me want to commit suicide. So I was, I was mad. I was mad. And he started screaming at me because apparently I wasn't working well with her. Even when I told him three times not to put me with this one girl because I don't work with, work well with her. Yet, he didn't listen. I feel comfortable with Mrs. Griffiths because um, she has, although I didn't have her in sixth grade, um, she has like experience with people who like maybe haven't been accepting or like people with the LGBTQ community. And um, she like created an alliance, um, which shows that she really does care about everyone's feelings and all of them. So I feel safe when I'm talking to her. My best friend because we like we talk to each other about like personal things and we help each other get through it if we're like sad. Miss Redmond makes me feel comfortable talking to her when I have issues. She like knows my whole story from previous um, visits. So she talks to me about that and she she gets caught up with it. And it just makes me feel better because she it feels like she knows what's going on. Mrs. Pearson, she's a really good um, person to go to and she's our guidance counselor so she listens very well to if we have problems and she reflects what happens and like her opinion and like what should, like any advice. Probably Miss Doggerty, uh, she was my history teacher and I, like pretty much from day one I could tell that she really cared, like more than just about the school and the grades and stuff, like she really cared about the students and wanted to get to know the students. And you know, she was checking up on me. I do have a go-to person. Um, one of the reasons why she's my go-to person is because I've known her for quite a while now. And every time that I need something, she's always there for me. It could be the smallest problem, like I need to get homework done because I have a lot going on after school. It could be something really big, like there's something going on at home that I really need to talk to someone about. And no matter what it is, she always makes time for not just me, but every single student in this school. And I really do appreciate it. My guidance counselor and my principal, because they know what I need to cheer up. And I know I can tell them anything. I think that teachers should try to never minimize a student's problem because in high school and in middle school it is the worst thing that you're ever going through. You haven't, it's the first time you're experiencing something as painful and as like detrimental to how you feel. Probably nice, clean, and when you walk in you would just like the teachers would probably welcome you and the teachers would probably be really nice. I think it's better when teachers don't lie, like they say, oh, like, no matter what you say, we'll keep in this room, but like, like, as I said before, Miss Griffiths, she, she, like, said, I won't share anything out of this room besides, like, something that will, that, like, hurts you inside, or that I need to talk about to make your life better, so it's overall, like, just that trust between them, that if you know you have that trust, then it's a good thing. They should teach us more about, like, the realities of having mental illness and dealing with mental health not just like touching on it and then just moving on but i think it would be like really important to learn about like self-harm and how your words can affect other people because apparently a lot of people don't know how that works so when a student is struggling with like 
a grade or like they're upset over a bad grade like that's the first bad grade they've ever gotten maybe so i think like just acknowledging like that they're they're allowed to feel that way is um, a step towards like destigmatizing and working with kids who struggle with mental health issues sometimes it's hard like even to get out of bed in the morning like sometimes it's hard and just to drag yourself to school and trying your best even if you don't get something or if you're just really having like an episode or something and the teacher says that you're not trying or you're not really doing anything right that can leave like a lot of like strain on somebody and can really hurt them so i wish teachers would just like kind of draw back and think about the issues that some people might be going through even if they don't know the full story it's a struggle for me to like wake up sometimes and i'll like work on that and i think teachers need to know that like we're all dealing with something and we need to like work together to get to a point where we're at the same level i feel like we don't need to like sacrifice our mental well-being to like get that success that we want to be at we're not just academic machines. Things are gonna get rough, definitely, throughout your life, your whole life, if you're struggling with anxiety. But you just need to keep your head up and know who you can go to and you need help and what you can do to help yourself. And that's the most important thing, probably, helping you and others and self-love. I would probably say talk it out to relieve your stress. Talk to someone you really trust. Not someone you just know because they might like spread the word and you might make yourself feel, they might make you feel like worse. You're stronger than you know. You have people that love and support you. Even if it doesn't look like it, you don't think there are people there. And that's part of why we have those resources at the school because people do care, the administration, even though it may not always seem like it, they really do care. And also, as far as the two personalities, just be yourself wherever you are. Don't try to be someone you're not, because that stresses you out. It's not genuine. People start, you know, people figure it out eventually. Just be who you are, be yourself, be genuine. And you don't need to be fake to have friends. You can be your own person. I think that's really what I want to get at, is be yourself, be your own person. Sure. Don't try to be someone else for people to like you. People will like you for who you are, and if they don't, that's their problem. For people struggling with depression and loss of a loved one, I would say, you're not alone in this world, and you have purpose.